One of the things that's so interesting about Cuba is that over the last almost 60 years, Cuba's been isolated from much of the rest of the world, most significantly from anything U.S. related. But you kind of feel like you're entering a time warp because all of the cars from the 1950s, everything that was coming in from the United States before the revolution, they're still here, they're still functioning. I mean, at first it's shocking and kind of weird because you're just not used to it. I've seen cars that clearly from a couple generations ago. It's like you're in a different time, you're in a different era. There's something preserved here that hasn't changed. I've been to Cuba for the first time in 2011. And in the last two years, actually, many things have changed for Cubans. And I, I wanted to come back because we didn't have a film at that time with us. So all we did was film each other. But I had the feeling that the island had much more potential to film a real skate clipper, to document uh, the skate spots they have, the really colorful and really interesting spots to me. So I absolutely wanted to come back and film a part with Patrick. No grip tape. No nothing. People are excited to see us skating, you know, there's not, we wouldn't necessarily draw crowds and it's something that I feel like people have seen before. There's a small skateboarding culture here and I was expecting really rugged pavement and spots that were difficult to skate. I hadn't really seen any skating clips or photos or any Cuban spots. There's enough architecture that's been renovated or at least constructed in the last 20 or 30 years that it wasn't hard finding spots to skate. So during the 1950s, there was a revolutionary takeover headed by Fidel Castro. And Cuba was transformed into a communist state. All of the land and businesses were expropriated and taken over by the government. The United States placed some pretty extreme sanctions on Cuba, an embargo that's lasted all the way until today. One thing you really have to get used to in Cuba is that you have to wait for anything. Whether you want to go to the supermarket and buy a piece of meat or if you want to exchange money at the bank, everything is super slow and takes a while. When you walk into the grocery stores, 
or the supermarkets, if you can even call them that. The options are, are, are few and they're clearly controlled. Where you'd normally have 30 different brands or types of toothpaste options, you have, you're given two or three maybe. You don't, you don't have much to choose from. So rather than seeing billboards with Coca-Cola signs, the advertisements are replaced by government revolution related propaganda. So since, since two years ago, many things have changed in Cuba. Um, Raul Castro, the brother of Fidel, is making many changes little by little and uh, people are actually now allowed to buy private houses and private cars and don't have to exchange it anymore like before. So many people can start their own private business. There's uh, small private restaurants and uh, you have more stuff to buy in the supermarkets. Many people ask you, hey, do you like Cuba? Yeah, okay, because you're allowed to leave. And this was the main question three years ago. Now this time, as people are allowed to have a passport and they're able to leave the country if they want, I think many people feel more free just to, just to know, to have the opportunity to go if you really want and not to have to escape. It's really great for the people, I think. To me, what I really appreciated on this trip was that we didn't have access to internet, just maybe one or two times in the, when we went to the fancy hotel. So you just have to deal without internet and it makes it really nice that when you sit in the restaurant and not like anywhere else when you go on tour now, everybody takes out his phone, is constantly on Facebook or Instagram, you just have to talk to each other. And we had great exchanges and just a good time all the time.